get frustrated why your score is not improving why it's stuck to 80 to 90 always no matter how much you practice how much you try it's because you're doing one thing wrong and you're not using your brain to answer the questions correctly so if this is your problem of not getting the score improved more than 90 or 80 then this video is just for you because in this video I'm going to tell you some approach which can improve your score more than 30% so you can qualify CSN and GRF in your next attempt so if you want to know that stay tuned and watch the lecture in this video I'm going to share three important tips that is going to improve your marks almost more than 25 to 30 percent and believe me I've tried this earlier and that works so let's first talk about the tip number one to improve your CSI net score more than 30 percent the very first thing is very simple though but yet very much effective and that is while you're reading the questions in CSI net exam read them and attain them in the reverse order that means whenever we attain the question in CSI net exam in part A, B and part C we always start with the question number one right then we continue to go one two three four like that from the front to the back but actually CSI never obliged to tell you that that you don't need to read like that you don't need to start from the beginning and end at the end there is always you can start from anywhere in the question and believe me it's always better to start from the end so if you choose part C of the CSI net exam then always start with the last questions or some place in the unit number 9, 10, 11 unit questions from that part and go backwards that is from the last to the first the same thing applies for questions for unit B as well as for uh, the part C okay and part A so for all the parts do this read the question attain the question in the reverse way from the back to the front and believe me although it sounds so simple but it's going to improve your score a lot because the questions that are generally placed at the end are comparatively easier the question that you see in the front so have if you haven't tried this earlier try this this time in the CSI net exam and bet you will help you'll get help and definitely if you get some help after the net exam don't for, forget to put comments in this video regarding this problem okay number two the tip number two that I'm going to uh, share is another very simple but effective and that is regarding selection of the questions there are many type of questions given in the CSI net exam I have a dedicated class for that and video for that what kind of questions are given how to solve them but remember one thing in CSI net exam the questions one type of questions are direct means they ask you a question and there are four options any of those options are correct and you need to choose that instead of attaining this kind of questions you know questions like which of the following is uh, something like then there are four options and that's how the questions are so instead of selecting this kind of questions I'm going to put one example of question here as well instead of placing this kind of question you should answer those questions which are asked by giving you options in combination that means you know the questions where they give a big statement and there are four different statements are given P, Q, R and S and then there will be a combination of those options like uh, A, P and Q, B, Q and R, C, P, Q, R and D, S only so question like this, these are known as combination question select combination question more and answer them more the reason behind it is that combination questions are much easier to answer compared to the fill in the blank type of questions because in combination questions you don't need to know all the four statements whether they are true or false even if you know two questions two of the statements whether they are true or false you'll be able to answer the question quite easily and the example will be given here okay for example look at this question this is a direct fill in the blank type question amino acid cellulose cysteine is incorporated into polypeptide chain during translation by and there is the fill in the blank charging of cellulose cysteine into tRNA followed by the incorporation through serine codon charging of serine into tRNA followed by modification of serine into cellulose cysteine and then incorporation through serine codon charging of cellulose cysteine into tRNA and then incorporation through cellulose cysteine codon charging of serine into tRNA modification of serine into cellulose cysteine and then incorporation Operation through a specially placed top code on so this is just I read the question it takes more than one minute to just read it and then you need to comprehend all the four options and then selecting the answer and even this question is a group B 
big question so you can see this question can take up a long time uh, to even interpret and solve and actually you need to know about the questions answered directly so you cannot rethink the question after all because you know selenium cysteine is coded by the stop codon and we know if this is a stop codon it's going to stop the protein synthesis so how can we add selenium cysteine obviously that means the selenium cysteine will not be added with the help of the selenium cysteine codon obviously there will be a stop codon which is specifically placed based on which the selenium cysteine will be bought by the trna so the option should be d charging of serine into trna first modification of serine to selenium cysteine and then incorporation through a specially placed stop codon so actually if you don't know about this fact you cannot even answer the question it's too much time consuming even respect to a b question so it's only of two marks question now let's move to the combination question in group c and i'll tell you why i told you to choose combination questions c the quantum yield of photosynthetic carbon uh, fixation in C3 plants and C4 plants studied in function of leaf temperature. Following are the statements based on the study. And four statements are given. Now you need to find the correct statement. Now here we are going to see that combination what is known as the option driven method of answering MCQ question. At lower temperature the quantum yield of C3 plant is lower than C4 plant. Now the very first thing that you should know is this statement is false. You need to know that this, this quantum yield of C3 plant is always more than C4 plant. In, in low temperature, in high temperature, it doesn't matter. C3 plant's quantum yield will always be more than C4 plants if the carbon dioxide concentration is always optimum. So statement 1 is not true. So any of the options carrying uh, statement 1 will not be true. So you once, once you read this statement, just look at the option. You can see that option A, C and D, all these three options have statement 1 in it. So obviously neither option A nor C nor D are correct. The only correct option should be option B. We don't need to even read all the three statements of 2, 3 and 4. We directly know as the sentence uh, statement 1 is wrong then option B is the only option that should be correct based on the question pattern that is formed. So you can see that we don't need to even read through the whole questions. We need to get to answers and we, we can get uh, reach the answers very very fast in this occasion. It's not only about this question, but if you look at another question, pre-mRNAs are rapidly uh, readily bind by, bound by the SNRNPs which carry out the dual stage of RNA splicing that removes the introns and joins the upstream and downstream exons. So uh, once you read it, you know it's about splicing. So if you know splicing, let's go into it. The following statements are described now which among these is true. Among all the introns begin with GU and end with AG sequences, hence all the GU and AG sequences are spliced out of the RNA. Let's say we don't know about that. U2 RNA recognizes important sequence at the three prime receptor end of the intron let's say we don't know about that either now I told you that we need to know at least two statements correctly the cell uh, the, the spliceosome uses ATP to carry out accurate removal of introns now what we know is that spliceosome never uses ATP because this process is catalyzed by the ribozyme it's a uh, making and breaking of same bond so you don't need any external energy so we know that option 3 statement 3 is wrong so any of the option carrying statement 3 is also wrong so if you look at the option option B and option C carry is a statement C so those are wrong now let's look at an unusual unusual linkage with two prime hydroxyl group of guanosine within the intron forms a ladder structure and we also know that this statement is wrong because the two prime hydroxyl is actually involved in ladder structure but that is given by adenosine not the guanosine so options four a statement four is also false so the option remaining was a uh, as well as D. So among them we know that statement 4 is wrong so only option left is option A. So we take option A and option A should be correct one in this occasion. So you can see we only knew the statement 3 and 4. We know that uh, 3 is wrong, 4 is also wrong. So if you know that 3 and 4 are wrong, we can easily annihilate option B, C and D respectively. And thus we left up with only option A and that is the correct option. So this is known as the option driven method of solving group C questions in CS and exam. And you can do that for every single combination based questions and every single uh, match the following type of questions. So I hope this is going to help you. So as you see that this combination questions as well as that matching questions where the column 1 need to be matched with column 2 are quite easy to answer and it requires only partial understanding of the question to be answered so it increases your chance to answer those questions correctly compared to the other fill in the blank type of questions or mechanism fill in the blank type of questions. The third tip here is do not feel obliged to answer every single question. 
okay nobody is putting a gun on your head and asking you that you need to answer every single question that is given that means you know we know that 15 questions to be answered from part a 35 questions to be answered from part b and 25 questions to be answered from part c but the big problem is that our psychological setup as we always appear in semester exams we generally attain most of the questions answer most of the questions that's how we are tuned into that if you fail if you if you leave a question it's bad obviously if you leave a, leave a question it is bad but if you attain a question and get a wrong answer out of it is even worse so do not feel obliged to answer all the 15 out of 15 in part a 35 out of 35 in part b and 25 out of 25 in part c because i have other videos that shows that in the 30 this 25 questions in part c if you answer 20 of them correct and in part b if you answer 20 of them correct and in part a if you answer 10 of them correct still you'll get a pretty solid good score to qualify csi and net grf so think about it and don't feel obliged to answer a question which you are not sure about so often what we do is when we attain question and we think like there are 35 questions to be answered in part b and we only able to answer 20 questions it feels bad so we choose some other questions which are not that confidence uh, we have to answer them so so simply we read that question and thinking of that if we leave these questions only 20 out of 35 i may not be able to qualify and we attain those extra four or five questions uh, due to this psychological turmoil that we've been going through in the exam and as a result of which those five questions that we attain may end up in giving us a very bad negative marking that's going to decrease your score down from much greater score to a much lower score this is one of the biggest reason to have a negative marking so if you want to work out your negative marking this is the place to work on so do not feel emotional attachment with the question and think about because you can still win it without answering all the mentioned number of questions okay but you need to be very much confident about answering every single question that you choose particularly the part c questions because there's a negative marking of minus one for part c question so here we go these are the three tips if you use these three tips in the upcoming csi net exam i believe your score will improve so stick into this rule stick to these three tips only don't uh, think about anything else just go to the exam and follow these tips and i believe your score will be improved by 30 percent in the csi net exam so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends so that they also get to know this benefit because the exam is near and stay tuned because more videos about to come regarding the csi net exam thank you see you later